Good day and welcome. Today we are on an exciting topic on the different types of animals on Earth. There are many different kinds of animals and these animals are invertebrates and vertebrates. At the end of the lesson today, you will be able to describe each of these two broad groups giving examples. So, let's dig in. There are hundreds of thousands of different animals in the world. Biologists are still discovering new animals. If we group similar animals together, it is easier to study them and to learn about patterns in nature. When we sort things, we put similar things in the same group because they share certain characteristics. The things you learn at school are sorted into different subjects. The books in the library are sorted into different sections. Items in a shop are sorted in different departments. There is a lot of variety of animals on Earth, and one way to sort them into groups or to categorize them is based on the presence or absence of bones. If you bend forward and feel your back with your hand, you will feel your backbone. Scientists have sorted animals on the Earth into two large groups. Animals that have a backbone and animals that do not have a backbone. These are the very big groups, so they are further divided into similar animals. It is easier for us to learn about groups of similar animals than try to study each type of animal. We will explore these broad categories in more detail. First, let us look at animals that do not have a backbone. These animals are also called invertebrates. So, imagine a world without bones. That's the life of invertebrates. They do not have a backbone and they do not have bones. Invertebrate means an animal that does not have a backbone made of bone. Some of them are soft and naked such as an earthworm or a slug. Others have a hard or tough covering around their whole body, for example a cockroach and a crab. These hard outer coverings also include shells. This hard outer shell protects the animal and it is called an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is the shell or hard covering on the outside of animals. You can also say invertebrates have exoskeletons. An exoskeleton is made up of plates joined together to make a hard shell. The only place where an exoskeleton is thin and soft is where the body must bend, for example at the leg joints. The advantages of an exoskeleton are that it supports and protects the soft internal parts of the animal. It also provides waterproofing to prevent the animal from drying out. The disadvantage of an exoskeleton is that it cannot grow. The animal has to molt. Molt means to shed out a covering to grow a new and bigger one. The new exoskeleton is soft soon after molting so the animal can be attacked easily. Invertebrates come in a massive variety and they make up about 95% of all animal species on Earth. These invertebrate animals can be sorted into many different groups. Let us now talk about the different groups of invertebrate animals that we find on Earth. Let's start with worms. Worms are long, thin, and soft animals that live in soil, water, or inside other animals. They have no legs, eyes, or antennae. Some examples of worms are earthworms, tapeworms, and leeches. Millipedes and centipedes are long, segmented animals with many pairs of legs. They have one pair of antennae and a pair of jaws. They have hard exoskeletons that help them protect their soft bodies. They live in moist habitats, such as under rocks, logs, or leaves. Insects are the most abundant group of invertebrates. They have three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. Insects have a hard skin around their bodies. It protects their bodies and is important for moving. They have three pairs of legs, six legs, attached to the thorax. They also have one or two pairs of wings. They have two compound eyes. These are large eyes which are made up of many small parts. Some insects have simple small eyes. Insects have a pair of antennae, or feelers, to sense their surroundings. Some examples of insects are bees, butterflies, ants, and grasshoppers. 
Spiders have two body parts, cephalothorax and abdomen. A spider has a soft, tough, leathery outer skin, but it is not an insect. They have four pairs of legs, eight legs, no wings and no antennae. Ticks are parasites which means they feed on the blood of other animals. Snails and slugs are a type of soft-bodied invertebrates. They have a muscular foot which they use to move and secrete mucus. They have a head with two pairs of tentacles which are sensory organs. Snails have a shell which protects their body while slugs do not have a shell. Crabs and lobsters have a hard exoskeleton which is a protective outer covering. They have two body parts, cephalothorax and abdomen. They have five pairs of legs, one pair of claws, and a pair of antennae. They live in aquatic habitats, such as oceans, lakes, or rivers. Now, let's talk about animals that have a backbone, they are also called vertebrates. You can call them the bony bunch because they have bones. Vertebrates make up about 5% of all animal species. They use their bones for support, protection, and movement. They have an internal skeleton, which supports their body and allows them to move. This internal skeleton is called an endoskeleton. An endoskeleton is a skeleton found inside an animal's body. Vertebrates all have a backbone made of small bones called vertebrae. An endoskeleton is covered by muscles and soft body tissue. It does not protect on animal as well as an exoskeleton does, but it can support larger sizes and more weight. So, vertebrates can be bigger because they have this special inside frame, the backbone, giving them the support they need to grow larger. An endoskeleton grows with the animal and molting does not take place. Skeletons of vertebrates are made of bone and cartilage. Cartilage is flexible and tough. It is found at the joints. Joints are places where bones meet. Cartilage is flexible, tough substance that cushions bones at the joints. There are five groups of animals that have an endoskeleton. These are mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Let us look at each of these briefly. Fish are aquatic vertebrates that have scales for protection, fins for swimming, and gills for breathing underwater. They have a streamlined body which helps them swim. Some examples of fish are sharks, salmon, and goldfish. Amphibians are vertebrates that can live both on land and in water. They have moist skin, which helps them breathe. They have four limbs, which help them walk or hop. Some examples of amphibians are frogs, toads, and salamanders. Reptiles are vertebrates that have dry skin, which is covered with scales or plates. They have four limbs, which help them crawl or run. They are cold-blooded, which means they depend on the external temperature to control their body heat. Think about your lizard friend. Lizards are cool because they're cold-blooded. Unlike us, they don't have their own internal heating system. Instead, they rely on the weather outside. On sunny days, the lizard feels warm, and on cold days, it feels cool. It's like they take the temperature from outside to decide how they should feel inside. Their body temperature depends on the weather outside. That is why we call them cold-blooded. That's why you see lizards in the sun, they're trying to warm up. Some animals have tiny heaters inside them. Humans, cats, and birds have heaters that always stay warm, keeping body temperature up when it's cold outside. Such animals are called warm-blooded animals. Some examples of reptiles are snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. Birds are vertebrates that have feathers, wings, and beaks. They have a lightweight body, which helps them fly. They have two legs, which help them walk. They are warm-blooded, which means they can generate their own body heat. Some examples of birds are eagles, sparrows, and penguins. Animals called mammals have hair or fur on their bodies. This hair or fur helps them keep warm by providing insulation for their bodies. 
They have four limbs, which help them walk, run, or swim. They are warm-blooded, which means they can generate their own body heat. They have mammary glands, which produce milk to feed their young. Some examples of mammals are humans, dogs, cats, and whales. We have come to the end of our class today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the different animals out there as much as I did. Maybe I will become a biologist one day. So until next time, keep well.